This is going to be a study on the topic of the glorified body. One of these days, if you are a Christian, you're going to get a brand new body. Have you ever heard your pastor or Bible teacher or just a preacher on the internet or TV mention glorified bodies? Uh, maybe they didn't explain it, but I'm going to show you what a glorified body is today. These are your heavenly spacesuits because in this body you'll travel through space faster than the speed of light to get to the third heaven. And then you will travel back faster than the speed of light from heaven to earth. But if you look at 1 Corinthians 15, 49, it says, And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Right now you have the image of the earthy. You have this corruptible body that is still capable of sin. And that is why Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And this is also why Paul says, We are waiting for the redemption of our body. Our souls have been redeemed, but our flesh is another story. Your flesh will be changed to be as perfect as your inner man. This will happen at the rapture of the church. That's when you get your glorified body. You see, Jesus Christ is coming back, and we will meet him in the air. In Philippians 3.21, it says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So this vile body that we have right now, which is still capable of any sin, will be fashioned just like the Lord's glorious body. And the Bible may not say much about our glorified body, but it tells us some things about Jesus Christ's glorified body that he received after his resurrection. So if our body will be like his, then that means we can find out some truths about our glorified body from looking at scriptures about the Lord's. And 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we will be like Jesus Christ when he appears and changes our vile body. And more proof of this in Romans eight twenty nine, for when for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So you see there, to be conformed to the image of his son. Now in 1 Corinthians 15, you see the greatest passage on this subject. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall not all sleep, meaning we won't have all died yet. Some saints have already passed on. They are asleep they are dead in Christ, but me and you are still alive. But we will both be changed, the dead and the alive at the rapture. In 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So our bodies are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. The dead saints will put on incorruption. Their bodies will not be uh, dead and rotting and decomposing. And they'll be caught up. Their souls will come down with Jesus Christ from heaven and meet their body. And their bodies will be changed into a glorious body. You see, some people think, well, when you're dead, you know, you're just in the heart of the earth. But you're, if you're saved, your soul actually goes to heaven. And at the rapture, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down, the souls of the dead saints come down with him. And those souls will meet the bodies of those dead saints. And their bodies will be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 53, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So this mortal must put on immortality. That's the saints who are alive at the rapture. And we will go more into how immortal you will be in a minute. 
But verse 54 says, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? No more worrying about death and the grave, because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. And just as sure as he resurrected, that's how sure it is that you will be resurrected. Now, let's look at the Lord's glorified body, because since our body is going to be like his, we can learn some things about ours by looking at his. And first, looking at Acts 1.11, it says, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. It seems that when the Lord went up, he went up rather slowly at first, because they seem to watch him go up. But the Lord's body can transport back and forth from the earth to the third heaven at the faster than the speed of light. Something NASA can't do with infinite amounts of money. There will be no need for an astronaut suit. You'll be able to breathe. You'll be able to withstand what, whatever cold or hot may come your way. And here is a good verse that reveals something about the Lord after his resurrection. And here you have Peter in Luke twenty four twelve. It says, Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wandering in himself at that which was come to pass. So a small detail, just a small detail from this verse. Notice when reading the Bible, little small details can lead you to finding out something awesome. But Peter saw the linen clothes laid by themselves, but he didn't see the Lord's body. So in your new body, God gives you a new set of clothes. And something else interesting is you leave your old clothes behind. That's why many times you hear someone talking about the rapture and they're talking about your clothes will be left behind. And a good proof for that here is Jesus resurrected, but he left his clothes. For example, if the rapture happened right now and you're saved, you're going to be caught up and your clothes will be left behind. So maybe an unsafe family member will come in your room or something and just see your clothes laying there on your shoes and your jewelry and they'll wonder what happened to you just like peter's like wondering in himself at that which was come to pass and you're going to get some new clothes in your glorified body in revelation 19 7 through 8 it says let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for fine linen is the righteousness of saints so after the rapture the judgment seat of christ and marriage feast you will have clothes that literally show how righteous you are unlike today where people are going around and judging you how good you are based on your clothes and many times you may judge yourself about how good you are based on your clothes for example a tie doesn't make you a christian a long dress doesn't make you a christian you can't sh uh, just show that you're righteous on the inside by your clothes although if you are living righteous it will show in your clothes but when it comes to eternity when you've got your glorified body your clothes will show your righteousness it says fine linen is the righteousness of saints so you get new clothes, you get a new body. And back in Luke 24, we see another incredible ability of the Lord's resurrected body. It says in Luke 24, 30 through 31, And it came to pass, as he said it meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and break, and gave to them, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. So Jesus, in his resurrected body, could interact with people on earth. Just like you in the millennium will be able to interact with people on earth that are in still in natural bodies. And notice something else. He vanished out of their sight. The Lord Jesus Christ could appear and disappear anytime he wanted to. Have you ever wanted to be able to teleport 
or go invisible, well, in your glorified body, you will have that ability. You'll be able to appear and then quickly vanish out of sight again. Luke 24, 39, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. So, in the Lord's resurrected body, it wasn't just a spirit. He said, handle me, so you could handle his new body. It had flesh and bone. So your new body will be flesh and bone. Verse 41 through 43 in Luke 24 says, And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye, any, have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. So the Lord, in his glorified body, ate food. And it wouldn't have been to stay alive because it's a incorruptible body. It was for complete pleasure and just for fellowship. There's so much stuff today that's a sin. You can't hardly do anything today that's that's not a sin. So many times people just end up eating together because, you know, it's not a sin to eat and that's how you can fellowship. Instead of going to see a filthy movie or drinking, playing cards, together all these sinful things people do so you can get together with someone and eat so in eternity one of the things you'll do you'll eat meals while you fellowship with believers and you won't have to count calories or worry about gaining weight or worry about germs or worry about passing it after you eat so that answers the question will we eat in heaven so that the answer is yes and you can see when the Bible talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb, that marriage feast we're going to go to after the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be eating there. But notice that Jesus Christ could travel through space so quickly that he went from the earth to the third heaven and then back to the earth in no time. In John 20, he's talking to Mary after his resurrection, and he's about to ascend to the Father. In John twenty seventeen through 18, it says, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. So he ascends to the Father, and then shortly after comes back down to the disciples, and then in that verse I read you earlier in Acts 1.11, they watch him go right back up. So he's able to travel from earth to the third heaven through space at the speed of light, quicker than that. But before he went back up, he talks to the disciples and walks right through closed doors. In John 20.26, 20, it says, And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. So you want to walk through solid objects just like he did here? Get a glorified body at the rapture and you can. Don't spend an arm and a leg on becoming a transhumanist so that you can supposedly live forever. Just get saved and then you can live forever with the Lord. But that is what our glorified bodies will be like, like the Lord's body. But now, we get those at the rapture when we go up with him. And then after that, after the tribulation, we come back with him. And in Joel chapter 2, it has some of my favorite verses in all of the Bible. And I believe it gives a description of the saints, the Lord's army, coming back with him at the second coming. Another interpretation has the army as the devilish locusts that come up out of the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 9. So if you take that interpretation, that's up to you and everything. But I just believe in Joel chapter 2, this is referring to us in our glorified bodies coming back at the second coming. So in Joel chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. Look at this Joel character one of the minor prophets. He is definitely what you would call a doom and gloom of preacher. Look what he's saying, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. And his name's Joel, but he's 
definitely not, nothing like Joel Osteen. So the negative preaching, the hellfire preaching is very biblical because all the preachers were like that in the Bible. But he says, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong that there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. First off, it says a great people and a strong. I believe this is people. This is us and our glorified bodies coming back with Jesus Christ. And in verse 3, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. So if in your life you have been the one being beat down and persecuted and always on the run, when you come back with Jesus Christ, the tables have turned, nothing shall escape you, as the verse says. Now verse 4, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. We will be on white horses, and have you ever rode a horse? If you haven't, no worries, because in your glorified body, you'll be more experienced at riding a horse than people who actually race horses. You'll be, you'll have the mind of like Christ. You'll know how to do things then that you never even experienced in this life. Now verse 5, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. So they run like mighty men, much faster than Superman in the Flash. When I was a little kid, I saw a cartoon where Superman raced the Flash. And I always wanted to be able to run fast, but in our glorified bodies, we'll be much faster than that because these are just cheap, off-brand counterfeits of our glorified bodies. They say Superman is faster than a speeding bullet, but you'll be much faster. In verse 7, it also said, They shall climb the wall like men of war. So who climbs walls? That would be Spider-Man. So there's you another counterfeit. You'll have that ability. The comic book heroes are cheap, off-brands compared to what you'll be. Then it says in verse 8, Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. So notice that neither shall one thrust another. No friendly fire. You'll have perfect aim. When you fall upon the sword, you won't be wounded. Wounded. So like Superman, when they try to pierce him with a knife, it just bends backwards. You know, you'll fall upon the sword. You'll probably break the sword. Verse 9, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up on the houses. They shall, shall enter in at the windows like a thief. All through history, the devil's crowd has been a thief. They've broken in homes. They've creeped into houses. They've stole from the saints. But now the tables turn. And he who laughs last laughs best. Verse 10, the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Notice how this matches what Jesus says in Matthew 24. So an earthquake before them. Maybe this earthquake is caused by them. You'll be able to punch the earth like the Hulk and make it crack open. I mean, all these abilities that you see in the comic books and in the movies, you'll have those abilities in your glorified body. In Joel 2.11, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? So the day of the Lord is the second coming of Christ, and that's when you come back with him, and he will utter his voice before his army, and you'll be on the winning side. So, have you been on the losing side all your life? You don't have to be anymore. You can be on the winning side. You'll be a winner at that day. As it says in Revelation 19, 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. See, that's me and you. 
As Jude said, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So are you, will you be coming back with the Lord at the second coming? Will you go up in a rapture before the tribulation and get a glorified body? To be able to do that, you need to make sure that you're saved. And the Bible makes it very clear on how to be saved. Paul gave us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15 when he told you that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died by shedding his blood and he died for your sins, for your sins. So you're a sinner and that's why you need a savior because you're too wicked to go to heaven. You're too wicked to be saved on your own. You're, you need the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And if you come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner that you are and put your trust on him and on what he did for you on the cross, then you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on him and what he did on the cross to be your payment for sin. It's not about works. It's not about living a good life. It's not about joining a church. It's not about being baptized. It's not about hanging with the right people. There's a lot of good things you can do, but none of those good things you can do will save you. It's all about faith, putting your faith on Jesus Christ. It's all on Jesus Christ. He did all the work. And if you'll come to him now, then God will give you the righteousness of Jesus Christ.